today on Clear Your Clutter Inside and Out, we're talking about work-life balance and work-life integration. Do you wonder if work-life balance is better for you than work-life integration? Have you wondered what the difference between the two is? Are you unsure how to begin either one and looking where to start? Learn how to figure out if work-life balance or work-life integration is best for you as we begin our month focusing on time management. Do you control your clutter or does your clutter control you? On Clear Your Clutter Inside and Out, we'll teach you awareness as well as action steps to create change in your life. Come on, let's get started. Happy May, everyone. May is my favorite month, probably because it's my birthday month, but in general, May is just, you kind of in spring, you're feeling pretty good, at least here in the Northern Hemisphere. And it just is a month that makes me happy. Usually the flowers are in good shape and pretty much full swing, so just makes me super happy. A couple of announcements for you all, since you listen to podcasts, I'm assuming you probably listen to more than just mine. There is a new online magazine called Podcast Magazine, if you're interested. I was interviewed for it, and my interview is scheduled to come out in the March edition at the end of March. I know as I'm taping this a little early, but I just thought that that would be a resource for you if interested. I was interviewed for the magazine and met this wonderful woman and really hit it off, and it sounds like the first one is going to premiere at the end of January, and it sounds like it's going to be pretty cool, and they're going to do in-depth interviews on anything. So if you have an interest, it's just podcastmagazine.com. You Google it'll come up. So I just share that. After a conversation with her, she suggested asking my audience a question. So I'm going to ask you all a question. If you have any suggestions for book fairs where I could go or places to speak, I'm looking to speak more publicly. I've spoken regionally and definitely looking to expand that. So if you have any thoughts, please shoot me an email, julie at reawakenyourbrilliance.com. I thought, what a great suggestion. I know I have, I don't like to brag, but I have the best audience ever. But Google doesn't always find everything, especially for smaller places that perhaps are looking for speakers that I wouldn't know about because I can't find on Google. So I dropped that thought in your head. If there's anything you'd like to share with me, it is most appreciated. This month, we're focusing on time management. Now, I know you know if you don't have good time management skills, that's definitely going to create clutter in your life. For example, if you're always running behind, you're not keeping your time well, you're stressed out, right? And that's causing mental clutter. You can create emotional and relationship clutter if it's causing fights because of your tardiness. We had a family member that we once lied about the time something started so that they would get there on time, but it would cause a lot of stress. It can create spiritual clutter if you're not getting to work on what's important, right? If you want to have the time to paint, if you want to have the time to exercise and you have poor time management skills, and that stuff needs to get done and it's not. Physical clutter, right? If you don't have the time to pick up and you keep saying, oh, I'm going to clutter, I'm going to organize, and there's never any time for it. Your health can suffer if you're not finding time to exercise. And of course, financial clutter if you're paying late fees because you haven't set up time management skills, or if you have to run to the drugstore where it costs a lot more instead of buying your weekly groceries is just a few examples. So as we start the month, kind of ruminate, contemplate about your time management skills and how it's creating clutter for you. Today's episode was inspired for a while as work-life balance. Now it seems to be trending towards work-life integration. And I always say, do what's best for you. And I think a lot of it, quite frankly, is semantics. And I had an aha moment when I was drafting this out. And I'll share that later on because I think it really boiled down to this one point. 
But what's important and what you want to think about is what fits with your lifestyle. And maybe you need to facilitate between integration and balance. Or maybe you create a hodgepodge of something that combines the two. Remember everything, clearing, clutter, organizing, exercise, eating, no one size fits all. You have to make an individualized plan. And since they can be buzzwords, I wanted you to really know the difference. And so let's first define it. Work-life balance, according to Wikipedia, includes proper prioritizing between work, career and ambition, and lifestyle, health, pleasure, leisure, family and spiritual development, meditation. That came from Wikipedia. Work-life integration is professionals blending what they do personally and professionally to make both work. And they shared that tr the traditional image of a scale, which is associated with work-life balance, creates a sense of competition between the two elements. Work-life integration instead is an approach that creates more synergies between all areas that define life, work, home, family, community, personal well-being, and health. So let's get a little more in depth. Here are the details. And what it boiled down to me, I'll just share this at the beginning before I define them. I did work-life balance when I did a nine-to-five job. When I started my own business, I was doing work-life integration. I don't know if I could have articulated that 11 years ago, but that's really what I was doing. I don't like to get caught up in names and semantics. I think that that's a mistake you can make. You know, when I was writing my book, I said, some of you might say, oh, that's not spiritual clutter. That should fit in emotional clutter. And I said, don't get caught up in that. So I'm going to share that same advice here. Don't get caught up on what it called. Just think about making your life work and making sure that you're having good care in all areas of your life to the best of your ability. So balance. One thing I want to make clear is this doesn't mean an equal balance because life is going to vary. I am again focusing on health. I've got a, an interesting health year coming up. So one of my areas is exercise. And so I've said, okay, I want to exercise three to five times a week. That's my goal. I can't exercise every day. The reality of having that, having that happen is very minimal. So this is what it's not an equal balance. Some should say I should exercise every day, but I've got to do what I can. And so that is a good balance for me. And again, there's no one size fits all balance. It's like, okay, I have all these different elements of my life. How am I going to try to manage to fit them together? In this, you strive for achievement because you're doing your job. But you also have your life, right? Professional, personal. You want to be happy. You want to have time to celebrate, to happy, to joy, all that good stuff. Now, here's my point of view with this. What I think it boils down to is if you work for the man, if you work for someone else, you're going to have to do work-life balance. I think it'd be very challenging to do work-life integration. So for say, for example, you're an ER doctor and you work a 12-hour shift. The likelihood of you being able to go out and run errands is probably pretty slim. You probably, your 12 hours of work have to be focused. If you're an, a secretary or an assistant on a nine to five job, same thing. From those nine to five, you probably are pretty much tied to your job. You're probably not going to have a lot of flexibility. Again, you might be able to run a couple errands on your lunch hour, but if you think about commute, all those other things, especially if you have a half an hour lunch break, you are not going to be able to get much done. So I was thinking back before I started working for myself. And so by the time I, I quit my last job, I, I was lucky. My commute was five minutes. And so they had moved right near where I'd lived. So that was really great. So a work-life balance day would look to me, okay, I, I think I, by the end, was working seven to three. So I'd get up, go to work, had a very minimal commute. I would sometimes, it really depended on the day. By the end, I just wanted out of there. So I would usually work through lunch so I could just 
escape. But prior to that, okay, so if I took a lunch break, maybe I would try to run an errand or two, or maybe I would try to walk on my lunch hour and get some stuff going and, and, and try to integrate that. But again, it was really hard. Like, I don't want to, I can't walk in nice clothes. I don't, I need to have exercise clothes. I'm just very weird about that. So there wasn't a lot of flexibility kind of within the day-to-day job. So then it goes back to the example of exercising. Okay, well, then I'm going to try outside of work to get in three to five days of exercising. Then I have to make sure, well, what am I going to do for connection? What am I going to do for community? And then doing all my errands like grocery shopping, dry cleaning, all that fun stuff. And so kind of the Monday through Friday was, was blocked out. It was mainly work. Anything else I was going to do outside of that had to fit an outside hour. So then you want to think, you know, again, community health, your mental needs, your emotional needs. You know, again, I think it's very holistic. You have to think of all those different ways. So again, with balance, it, there really isn't a lot of flexibility. I think, again, that's what it boils down to me. You've got these blocks of hours where you're working and you've got to fit everything else in. So then you think, okay, like looking at your week, make sure you're getting all the air, different areas covered. Now, work-life integration fits your needs. And again, I think with this, the difference is you work for yourself or I don't know, maybe you're a trust fund child or something, and you have a lot more control over managing your personal and professional life, right? When I was at work, I kind of didn't have much control. So again, it's going to cover the same things as worth work-life balance work, home, community, health, your mental needs, emotional, spiritual, all that good stuff. So again, to me, it really is about independence and having the flexibility that you can't when you have to be at work for a set amount of hours. So I'll give an example of a day. Now, this would be a typical day for me, not a typical because my day really isn't typical. So let's take, well, yesterday I had a client. Let's do a non-client day. Today I'm having a non-client day. So let's do, because if look at my week, I schedule clients. You know, I'm always something I make sure I have a break in between. I don't do an organizing client more than once a day. So, so let's say if I'm looking at my week. So today I don't have any days. Now, usually when I wake up before Tony, this was an odd day and I slept in because I was didn't sleep well the night before, had a client, had a meeting. So yesterday was kind of crazy. So typically I'd wake up. Again, non-typically, usually before Tony, feed the cats. I have, you know, I've got to get that done. Make sure the litter boxes are done. He usually would come in and answer email. By that time, Tony's probably had his coffee. So we usually play a game of cards. We play cards almost daily. So oh, he's been beating me lately. It's been really annoying. So play a couple games of cards. Then I'd come back. I'm always going to be writing on an admin day or a day when I have clients because I have blogs to do. I have I'm writing more books. I have social media posts to write. I have, I'm volunteer grant writing. So I'm always, writing is a huge part of my day. So then say I might come back and write for a couple hours. And then I might take a break. I might exercise. We have a rowing machine. So I might go and row. I'm doing that again. Oh, am I out of shape? But I'm working on it. I'm getting better. So then I take a break and row. And then after that, I have lunch. So maybe I'd come back and write more answer some more email, take a break, get Tony's dinner ready for him. If he's gone out in the gym and's really hungry, I will make him lunch. So that's taking a break. Then I might, again, do more work. It's been really right. Oh, duh. Writing the podcast, I'm recording. So this takes time. You have to record, then I have to edit, which is the most time consuming. Editing the the show is the most time consuming for me. So then I might have to edit and then I take a break. But if I edit, I have a kind of a system I use. I pre-edit. If you do any editing, anyway, it shows you on the movie thing and you know what to chop out. So I don't even listen to the, what I record. I get all the pre-editing done and then I turn on the sound and listen to it and edit from there. So I might edit and then take a break. Go snuggy with the cats. If I'm really tired, If I'm feeling I might need a nap today, then I'm going to take a nap. So then it's probably 
ends up being yeah, 10, mostly a 10 and 12 hour day. I'll answer emails at night. I have no problem doing that. And even though I'm quote unquote working for 10 to 12 hours, it doesn't feel like it because I'm taking breaks, I'm getting my work done. And, and I've also had a big switch, which I'm going to share with you at the end of the month. And I think maybe this is part of turning 50 that has how I'm doing time a little bit differently, but it's overall fits into the scheme of the quality of life for me. And so and that, you know, cards, exercise, maybe some reading, some meditation, just hanging out in nature. I'm able to just, we have these wetlands and we have a little deck. And so I can just sit and look out and watch the birds and see the salamanders and all that cool stuff. So again, I'm doing that throughout the day. So it doesn't feel like if I were at a nine to five job and have to work overtime, uh, completely feel that. So it's a quote unquote longer day, but it doesn't feel like if that makes sense. So that's just a little example of how a day might look for me again. Or so let's take yesterday. So I had to get up early. Well, early for me. We're not early risers because Tony's the he works from three to one, doesn't get home till quarter till two. And I think even if I'm asleep, most times I think I'm still listening to make sure he comes in. So I'm not fully asleep. So it went and I was okay, got the client done, worked an organizing client for four hours. And then like, oh, I'm going by the grocery store on my way home. I'm like, okay, let's pick up a couple groceries, got home, checked in with Tony, had some connection time with him because I was out the door before I was, snuggied with the cats, came in, all right, let me check email, did some email, really wanted a nap, but couldn't because I had a, uh, another client at, at, and I was like, oh, if I go to take a nap, I'm afraid I'll miss it. So did a little work, had a little call with the client, did, uh, we hung out, I made dinner, watched some TV, came back, checked an email because I had missed some stuff earlier in the morning. So again, just having that flexibility to kind of carve out the life that I want. Does the thought of clearing your clutter overwhelm you? Clear your clutter inside and out has 21 standalone chapters to fit your schedule and lifestyle. Stop being afraid, gain clarity, and go at your own pace. The Clear Your Clutter Inside and Out workbook lets you record your thoughts step by step as you go through the book. Free MP3 meditation with purchase. Get control of your clutter so your clutter doesn't control you. Reclaim time, money, sanity, and resources. Learn more at reawakenyourbrilliance.com and also available for purchase on Amazon. How to achieve. Here are some things to think about for work-life balance. Figure out your priorities, right? This entire podcast is about that. It's clearing your clutter to focus on what is most important. If you have your priorities, then you know how to fit them in and say, okay, with the commute, eight to six is blocked out Monday through Friday. So where am I going to fit in exercise? grocery shopping because I need to eat, meditation daily, where am I going to fit those in? And when you know your priorities, that makes it a lot easier. Track your time. If you are not sure how to figure this out, definitely track your time. In another episode, I'm going to be talking about distractions and time wasters because I think a lot of us don't know where our time goes. So if you are struggling, track your time. Get a little Saturday through Sunday or however they have it set up and block out work and then plot. And again, most of us are visual. So if you block out the time and then you can see like, okay, well, I can get, looking at my work schedule, you know what? I can get 15 minutes of meditation in three days a week if I'm willing to commit that. And then from there, you kind of track and you can plug in to create a schedule. And again, it's not going to be perfect. You're not always going to be able to follow it to a T. But if you have kind of a roadmap, then you can use that to kind of guide you. And so you see like, okay, I can, if I really think about it, I'm really clear about it, 
So instead of coming home and plopping down and getting on Facebook, I'm going to meditate. Respect your body clock. I'm used to be a morning person. I'm now not so much because of Tony's work schedule because that's kind of shifted. So I try not to schedule clients before 10 a.m. Like yesterday, I had to schedule it earlier. This is a lovely client that I have. And she has a really, she's the busiest person I know. And so whatever we can get in with her, I'm happy to do. But I try in general not to have anything too early. I don't, I need to be up for a couple hours. I like to end organizing clients by six. I don't want to work past that. Just, I start to feel fatigued in the evening. I don't want to work with a client at seven or eight at night. Again, very rarely I'll make the exception, but I have to understand my clock. I want to be at the best. I can write in the morning, I can write in the afternoon, I can write in the evening. That's one thing I'm really flexible with. It's just against because I love it and it comes easy to me. So I don't have to respect my body clock as much on that, but for the physical stuff I do. Don't try to multitask, which is good advice in general. You know, you can Google, they've done all these studies. We really can't multitask well, no matter what we think. So kind of say, okay, bye-bye, multitasking, and get back to that map that you've created to kind of do your schedule that way. Because you don't want to do, it's like when I work with someone and I have a contract and I say, let go of all distractions, you know, have the kids at someone else's house. Don't take phone calls. Because if you do that, if I'm working with you and you're taking a phone call, you're distracted, I might have to wait for you to answer a question before I can go to the next step. So don't try to do a bunch of different things. Keep your private time private. That's especially true for you, especially if you're working for the man. Say no. Say, you know what? Okay, you have me from nine to five. I'm not answering. Now, some of you, maybe you say I'm a manager. Okay, but then put a deadline, you know, no calls after eight. No. And that's, you need downtime. You need time to yourself. That's super important. So honor that. You say, okay, these are the hours I'm working, I'm gonna stop. Like I had for a while when I was my last job, I was a director of development. And so they gave me a Blackberry. I mean, are those even exist anymore? But I was like, you know what? I'm open to answer an email to seven. After that, I'm not doing it. Set boundaries. Like I just said, okay, I'm available to talk to this time, otherwise I'm done. Because especially you can take, and I think of teachers as a good example. You know, it sounds like they're like, when am I going to plan my day? I've got classes, maybe one free period. Get in the habit of setting boundaries. And you can train people. And you say, okay, then you need to pay us more because I have to work extra hours or whatever. It is. But set boundaries. Utilize technology wherever you can. You know, if you need, I guess Amazon has a delivery service now. There are things like that. You're like, okay, I'm just really busy this week. I'm going to hire Amazon to deliver everything to me. Whatever you can do help save your try to find someone local. I'm waiting for the day that Amazon explodes. I truly, guys, if I didn't have to be on Amazon for my books, I wouldn't. But anyone you talk to would be like, you just have to be on them. But then that causes tensions with independent booksellers. Anyway, it's been an interesting experience. Utilize technology where you can. If you need to be really focused, use an app to keep you on track. If you're on a tight deadline, for example, for something. Self-care. Make sure somewhere in your schedule, whether for you that's taking a walk, whether it's getting a massage, whether it's time snugging with your cats, make sure that self-care, because it's about balance, right? Not every day you're going to be able to get a massage or not every day you're going to be able to exercise, but you're getting it in and you're doing a pretty decent job most of the time. And then evaluate regularly. You know, life is not static. Life changes. So you just have to check in with yourself. You know what? This really isn't working for me. What needs to change? Maybe I thought that painting was what I really want to do, and I've been devoting all this time to painting, but you know what? It just feels, it now feels like it's another thing to do. I've lost the joy and the passion for doing it. So I think what I need to do is step back from painting, and I need to focus on caring for myself better. I maybe need to get naps. I maybe need to just do nothing. I maybe need to just rest and recharge. 
So just make sure that you're looking at that and evaluating regularly. Work-life integration. I'd say that everything I just mentioned, you can apply to work-life integration. A difference would be having a lot more flexibility with scheduling. Maybe in the morning you run errands and you work through lunch and you'll answer your work email until 9 p.m. Like as I mentioned before, like I have a 12 hour day or whatever it is, but it really isn't a 12 hour day. One thing I like to do is I try to, if I can, run all my errands during the week and off hours. Like people might be at the grocery store before work really early, that's not an issue or right after work. The grocery stores are going to be busy, so I go in the times when they aren't. I try to not run errands at all on the weekends. Sometimes that's not possible. Tony now works at 410, so he has Fridays off. Works for me because I'm like, okay, let's run stuff on Friday. Work smart and with intention. If you're going to have, like I've mentioned, these long days, be smart about it. Be efficient. I have a to-do list. I know what I need to accomplish. I'm now doing things where I take the entire month. These are the goals I have. I kind of laid out what I wanted to accomplish for the year, broke it down for the month. Like for instance, we are going through, we did a lot of downsizing. We moved last year. We're doing that again. And so January was the office. So I chunked that down and, you know, I had to, I'm so proud of Tony. I was like, you have to go through your bookcase. We have to go through the really good. He really stepped up the plate and as we progress has done a really good job. But so what I did, for example, was declutter and downsize and put that on the first half of the year. So that way, if I don't get it accomplished, then I still have time. That's just something that I had to do. So it's very intentional what I've created. I work smart again, knowing like I have these bursts. I tend to do these bursts like da 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 right, 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 and then I know I take, need to take a break. So that's also, I believe when you work smart and with intention, it takes you less time. So think about how you can bring that into your life. Be flexible. I mean, I think, you know, being a small business owner, an entrepreneur, not a solopreneur, you just have to. Well, you don't have to do anything. Everything, obviously, you have a choice. Nine to five, I'd say have a boundary, no calls, whatever. I don't mind taking a call at nine o'clock at night. And again, you know, depending on the client, if I have a client in California, they might get off work at six and have to do the call at nine. That's A-OK. -okay. And I'm completely fine like that. And again, doing everything in first and being flexible helps me. Focus on what you need to get done, not on the time spent. That's the kind of smarter, not harder. I feel truly, and this might be, and I've been very fortunate that I've had, for most of my, I've started work when I was 14, a dollar an hour. My dad was, when in West Virginia, you could work at 14, and my dad's like, yep, 14, go work. We have a couple great parks there, so I started out 14, a dollar an hour, working in the park, which I would recommend. It was very good for me in a lot of ways, and I think it would be very good I think there are many people I know who would benefit from doing jobs that don't pay so much to give them kind of a perspective on life. I would always do my job. Efficiency wasn't a huge concern, I guess is the best way to put it, because I'd always get my work done. But, you know, if there wasn't a deadline, like I didn't feel the need to push myself. I'm like, okay, well, I know I'm going to be here for these hours. Let's get done what I can. That's why I don't have, I don't have a block by block schedule. I write out what needs to be done personally over here. You know, for instance, I'm working and have to go to small claims court. So that's a step-by-step -step process. I'm like, okay, you know what? I just, I, I don't know if I can do this online and my dad's going to help me with this. So I have to, okay, I'm like, get Tony to print everything out. I'm going to fill out what I can as a first step. Then I'm working on the timeline as a second step. And so doing that, and not being like, oh my gosh, it's, I spent whatever amount of time on that. I don't think like that because <laughs> I'm annoyed that I have to do this small claims thing. And I don't want to think about 
I'm going to bring it up in front of the magistrate, but I don't want to think about how much time I've had. So like for another example, if I were to focus on the amount of time I spent on the books, I'd probably cry. But I was like, okay, this is what I want to do. It brings me joy. I have to focus on doing the work to make it happen and not about the hours spent. So see where you can work smarter, not harder. So as another example of that, working smarter, not harder. So I hired someone to do the book cover and they look awesome. I mean, she is so talented. She got me right away. Now, when I did another little course, I created, they had a little template that you could use. So I created it. Eh, it doesn't look so good. So that's a better example than what I've talked about, about working smarter, not harder. You know, I think, fingers crossed, that I have found someone reliable and good for some website stuff. That has been a huge pain because I, uh, again, I don't want to think about the time. Something happened and blew up and then GoDaddy, who's uh, anyway, but I'm like, I have to call them. I have to use them. I don't have someone here that I trust and that I can get it done. So that's about working smarter. Okay. Taking the time to interview people, finding a good match and that someone else can do that. That's smarter, not harder. And even with integration, you've got to make sure you're not working 24 seven. Take time off. It's integration. It's not work only. So let me say that again. It's integration. It's not work only. And reference that thing on my mom's brain, my interview with my friend, Wendy. You want to know someone who talked about being a workaholic and her wake up call and what happened to her. And again, at the end of the month, I'm going to talk about a big adjustment that I made in time management for myself this year that you can do with integration or balance, and it has made a huge difference. And again, don't get caught up in the semantic. Kind of marinate what I've talked about today. Think about what is going to work for you. And again, remember, it's no, even with integration, everything's not going to be perfect. Even if I have a day off, not a day off, a day without clients, and my plan is to exercise, maybe an interview opportunity comes through. You know, you, and that's the other thing I would say is keep space for opportunities. I talked about when I, with my last job, it was crazy towns, the craziest place I've ever worked. And it was constant because like all these fires constantly had to be put out. And so I don't like to say emergency. So keep your schedule open for opportunities. And that's happened before because I'm flexible. I've gotten interviews. People are like, oh, I had a last minute cancellation. I'm like, hey, I can do it. I can switch some stuff around. I'm your gal. Happy to do it. So that's another thing to consider as you are mapping out your time. Take action from today's podcast. Understand the difference between work life integration and work life balance. Decide which one suits your lifestyle the best. Consult with family, friends, or work if necessary. Create a roadmap to make balance or integration happen. Test drive. Make time for yourself and self care. Evaluate, course correct and make adjustments as necessary. Create your own path if needed. On our next episode, we're talking about top time wasters. Go out, clear your clutter to create the life you choose, deserve, and desire. When you clear your clutter, you can share your gifts with the world. Sign up for our free newsletter at reawakenyourbrilliance.com. If you've enjoyed Clear Your Clutter Inside and Out, please rate, review, and share us.